Um, and you have probably one of the most unique helicopters I've ever seen at a fun fly. And the reason I say that is because you pretty much homemade DIY W built this helicopter pretty much by yourself. I'm here at RCHN 6, and I am here with Quinn Sobloom. Said it right that time. Um, and you have probably one of the most unique helicopters I've ever seen at a fun fly. And the reason I say that is because you pretty much homemade DIY W built this helicopter pretty much by yourself. And I mean, you only have like a few parts here that are maybe um, from like another manufacturer, but like you milled a lot of this yourself. So let's let's talk about that. Um, so first, because like I said, there's a lot of this you actually handmade or made yourself. Yeah. Let's talk about the few things that are actually um, not made by yourself. So like the main gear. All right. Yep. Uh, the main gear is a line. Actually, here, I'll pull the Yeah, let's take the canopy off. Which, the canopy, um, you made yourself. Yep, I milled, so, I milled the molds for yeah. this canopy. Let's talk about the this canopy is, uh, first. It's uh, vacuum-infused carbon fiber. So, first the molds are milled, and then the carbon fiber is laid into the mold and vacuum-bagged, and then resin is infused through it. And this process makes a really light composite part. It's it's a, a little under 100 grams, and an average 700 fiberglass canopy would be around 160 to 170. So it's pretty big weight savings there going with that method. So um, yeah, for the uh, the parts that I did not use, um, we have an Align main gear. Um, this is an MSH tail rotor grips right here. Um, but again, see. when you say the tail, when you say the tail, just the grips. Just the tail Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Everything else, the tail case and the, the pitch arm, all of that, I machined myself. Um, and then the swash plate. The swash plate is Synergy. That's from a 766. Um, but yeah, everything else, the head, the frames, um, landing gear, I mean, basically everything else. I CNC machine myself and okay. designed using okay. a Fusion 360. Okay. All right, yep. so let's go. Let's go through that. So, okay, so your your boom. Okay, so the boom here. Um, tell me about how you made the boom, and then we'll go to the the tail and the tail fin. Okay, so the boom, it's a it's a piece of pre-made carbon fiber tube, but because of the uh, the direction of the weave it's kind of lacking in torsional strength so I had to reinforce the inside with braided carbon sleeve which was bladder molded and then you know mixed with resin <laughs> to uh, yeah give it enough torsional strength to not have tail vibrations so uh, yeah that's the boom and then um, their tail okay so the tail uh, the tail uh, it's kind of similar to like a compass 7 HV tail except it's it's a single piece tail case, so uh, there's some weight savings there. It's a little shorter. I tried to get everything in the tail as light as I possibly could. Um, other than that, let's see, what but else we got? you made the tail fin too, right? Yep, the I made, made the tail fin. That's milled carbon fiber out of a piece of, out of, a piece of carbon fiber plate. Um, yep, and then just carbon fiber rod for the push rod. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for the tail. Okay, and then when we look here, okay, so it's interesting too because the whole design, like I noticed, your battery's up on top and your motor's down here, yeah. um, like like you know you used to have on like the old Protus 500. So yeah. kind of like tell me, like why did you go with that design there? Well, basically, what I was going for was 
<clears throat> a really high CG because I wanted a really responsive cyclic and you know also be able to run kind of lower head speeds like you don't you don't need okay. you don't need crazy head speed on this to get a really quick cyclic it's really responsive because all the weight is up higher everything is really compressed so there's it's it has a really low uh, moment of inertia on elevator so it yeah it's just really effortless cyclic okay and and again so like all the the frames here, the um, and the landing gear. I mean, you pretty much did that all yourself. Yep, I designed all that and uh, milled it out of just carbon fiber plate. Wow. Yeah. And and like go so, you know the blade grips and the rotor head here, um, like you did that all yourself. Yep, I milled all that and a um, couple special things about the head. It has a. Uh, a bearing supported spindle hinge. Uh, basically what that does is it prevents phase lag. A couple other brands do this. Basically during heavy loading sometimes the spindle can lag behind a little bit and it causes the phasing to be inaccurate. So the, the spindle pivot just keeps it perfectly square in there and just gives a really precise cyclic feel. <laughs> Wow, that's intense. Yeah. Um, and you did make your own service, so here I got you on that. <laughs> so the electronics, um, but uh, and you do. I see you're using VTX blades, and these are, I guess, 700, right, or 696s. Yep. So these are 717s. Okay. The, okay. The width of the head is a little narrower than average, about 20, 20 millimeter less. So it's it would be equivalent to running like 700s on okay. with an average size head. Okay. Now um, I see here, so you have a belt design. Um, now my guess is the belt, uh, you probably got that from somebody else too, yeah, the maybe? Belt, the belt is existing from the Goblin 700. Okay. So that's okay. where I got the belt. Okay, pretty sweet. Um, and you got an X Nova motor here. Um, I see you got a Tribunus 200 amp. But again, it's interesting because, like I said, you got, your, you got your ESC down nice and low. Yeah. Um, and then you have, this is a belt tensioner. That almost looks like, is that maybe from a Goblin too? Nope, I actually milled the tensioner okay. and designed it. Um, the tensioner is kind of unique. It's similar to a traditional tensioner, but the, the arm that the spring anchors to is tipped slightly forward. So okay. as the tail loads and the tensioner swings forward, the, the spring gains leverage rather than loses leverage. So it kind of helps during heavily tail-loaded maneuvers just to make sure that the tail pulley isn't going to skip. Wow. Wow. So, all right. Um, just give me six, um, give me uh, maybe some of the specs. Like, what was the, ac the actual, when you say mill, like, what is the actual equipment that you were using to build this? Because, like, I'm not... I'm not. A, I've never done anything like this, and I don't really have a good background in it. But, but just for those folks who might know and wonder what the actual machine is yeah. or machinery you were using to build this, yep. um, I actually designed my own CNC machine using a Fusion 360, and I built that with uh, aluminum parts. Um, yeah, I had to learn a lot to figure out how to do CNC machining. I just started doing that probably about a year ago. Um, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun doing it. Um, yeah. Wow. I mean, that's just incredible. Another thing we didn't talk about is the weight. Um, okay. The all-up weight of this, um, I have pretty standard components in it. Like you said, 200 amp ESC, 4525, um, expert servos. And these are actually pretty big packs. This is 12S 5500. Oh, wow. And the all-up weight is 10.6 pounds, so it's it's very light for the components that it has in it. And that was kind of one of the goals. I wanted, goals? I wanted, I wanted low weight, and I wanted high CG, really compressed, just you know, long flight time, lower head speed, but while still having really responsive cyclic. So yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. I mean, that's just incredible. I mean, like it just like blows my mind because. You, you should get the award for, like, the ultimate heli ho uh, pilot hobbyist. Because, and, you know, like, a lot of times we see people who are, like, you know, they're good builders, but they're not good pilots. But, like, we took the flight video, and you were flying awesome. Yep. I mean, but at the same time, you built your own <laughs> helicopter. I mean, yep. <laughs> that's insane. Uh, so how much did it take you, how long did it take you to build all this? Um, I'd say probably... Two or three weeks designing it, you know, just messing around in Fusion 360, you know, trying to figure out what would work. And then I probably spent 
you know, maybe a month to six weeks uh, machining parts and putting it all together. So not not too bad, not too long. No, it really doesn't sound that bad. Yeah. Um, and also, so d did you have any technical background um, or maybe your job that you work that gave you a good background in doing something like this? Uh, no, not really. Um, I actually build cabinets for a living. You know, I've just I've just always been really interested, and in, you know, I. I do a lot of modifying on my helicopters, you know, I like to make my own little changes and one day I decided I wanted to start a fresh design, so that's pretty much why I decided to learn CNC machining. So uh, I mean basically just YouTube and Google just searching and just figuring it all out. Wow. I mean, that's just incredible. I mean, you know, because like I've seen people who maybe built little things, but nothing along this scale. And the people, the only people that I know would do something are people actually manufacturing helicopters. Yeah. But, but like, like you said, you're like, you're not even planning to sell this. You just made this for your own fun. And, uh, and you like, you obviously you got weight savings and you put some good stuff in there, yeah. uh, to make it feel lighter, but that's just incredible. Um, but are, people are probably want to gonna know. Are you taking pre-orders? <laughs> <laughs> nope, not at this time. Like like you said, it's it was all just for fun. I mean, who knows? Maybe someday somebody will show some interest in it, and you know, who knows? But yeah, it was just for fun. But we'll see. <laughs> wow. Now, all right, money wise, I mean, because people always wonder something like that. Money wise, how was it to go about and do something like this? Like cost wise, maybe if somebody else wanted to do the same thing. Um, you know, the really the only major cost was building my CNC. I probably have, you know, yeah, a, about two thousand dollars putting all that together, and you know, then there's other things you need tooling and vices and fixtures, but. As for the actual heli, the materials for that, there's maybe $20 worth of aluminum and $70 worth of carbon fiber and then just bearings and shafts and the other parts that I borrowed. So the heli itself really wasn't that expensive to build. Like I said, it's just, you know, it's having this, this, yeah, very time, time consuming, consuming, yeah. Time consuming. But yeah, the CNC was really the main cost. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it looked like to me like it was hold. I mean, you were out there flying and throwing down with it pretty hard, and I mean, it was holding up pretty good. How long have you been actually flying this heli? How long has it been since you made it? Um, I think it's I've been flying it for a little over a month now. I have um, probably a little over a hundred flights, and yeah, so far it's been holding up great. A hundred flights on this already. Yep. Wow. Yep, and it's wow. it's holding up. I'm beating on it pretty good. You you're making you're making heli manufacturers look bad. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> like now everyone's gonna build their own heli. We're gonna go out of business. <laughs> um, wow. I know, man. It's just that's just it's just just incredible. Now, how long have you been actually flying helis? Uh, let's see. Probably I think since 2012. So yeah, I guess about about six years now. Okay, yep. good. Yeah, so you, you have a good six years of actually yeah. flying helis and understanding how they work and everything. Yep. But still, like, this still is just amazing, you know? I mean, I, I literally, like I said, I know a lot of people and they like, oh, I like this or I don't like this or I wish this was on a heli, but none of them took it a level of, I'm just going to make my own helicopter and what I want to change, I'm just going to change. Yep, I mean, I basically just... You know, all the ideas that I thought would be ideal for, you know, for my flying style at least. I like a really light helicopter and I like really fast, responsive cyclic. So, yeah, it's kind of just tailored to how I like it. Well, it's pretty amazing. And I really appreciate you uh, spending the time to, let, to yeah. uh, give us this the lowdown on it. Yeah, and thank pretty amazing. And, uh, and thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no problem, dude. I mean, this is pretty incredible. I mean, you just blow my mind to see this. You know, <laughs> like a homemade helicopter. Wow. Yeah. There it is. Pretty impressive. And uh, uh, get out there flying and maybe we'll get some more video. Yeah, All right. Good. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you very much.